Oh my God. Oh my God. We made it in spite of everything that we had to go through. Uh, wait, before we get into the topic, especially if you're somebody who is nearly wedded, you're about to get married, you need to listen. You need to listen. But for now, can we just take a moment to just think about all the things you had had to go through in 2023 that has passed? And how you somehow found your way out of them, how they got solved, how they got better, you know, even the things that you lost, how you were able to survive them. Just take a moment and think. Just think. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can can you just see that? There's a mighty, mighty hand behind the scene of your life. Like, it is so tangible. If others can see it, I know that you can, right? Oh my God. So I'm excited to come back to the channel this way. What a great, fresh, you know, minty year to talk to you. Such a privilege. Such a privilege, I must say. Today we're talking about how to go through married life and build the foundation for a blissful family. Did you hear what I said? How to go through life as a newlywed and build the foundation for a blissful family. Now, this is all English, right? How do we make sure that the quality of our lives and those that are involved in our family circle gets better and not worse just because we chose to get married because we chose to ask someone's daughter to be our wife because we chose to bring some human beings into the world as children. How do we make sure that the foundation of this, which is so phenomenal, which is so, I mean, is the greatest phenomenon in the world to be able to marry, give birth to other human beings who will carry on our legacy. How do we make sure that this is done smoothly and we are all happy you know, that's what we're going to discuss, you know, basically. So the challenge is also a, a part of things we're going to talk about and how to triumph, you know, um, in the different phases, you know, how to, un um, how to um, understand the different strategies to use to create this foundation. If you watch my live session just a few days ago, I was in an actual um, construction site and I was talking about the fact that looking at the house going up every day, people are working, it reminded me of how a family, a relationship, a marriage has to also be built intentionally, block by block, right? So let's dive in, right? So welcome to the video. If today is your first time listening to this podcast, my name is Chisom Utibiaka and I'm a main coach and I love everything productivity and monetization of life. Yes, 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 yes. Now, why do I choose to speak to men? A lot of people ask me this question first. So men are human beings too. And also this is something that did the gender have a, such a passion for? Because I think also that when a man is high value, you know, not in the way that people say it. I mean, when a man is happy and is able to build a happy home, automatically he multiplies into a, a happy, a happy woman and happy children. And that is, that also goes into becoming a foundation for children to build happier homes. And that's the way it goes. So a man is the person who starts a family. So because it's not just about talking to that fine girl, talking about that, 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 that. There are so many topics covered already in this channel. You should, you know, you know, just binge watch, take your time and go through topic by topic and just enjoy. But we're going to look at the importance of building a strong family unit. And of course, the challenges that also we face while doing that. Now, transitioning to marriage from being single is something I think we, we need to start with, right? I mean, everybody was born single. Let's get that right. We all agree. All of us, we are born single. So being single is our default mode. Do you agree? Okay, you do. I'm happy you do. We all were born single. Even twins don't come with the same, you know, destiny. Don't come with the same thumbprint. Don't come with the same voice sometimes. Don't come, you know. So they are, uh, they are distinct individuals on their own. And they face their own life battles separately as individuals, right? So, um, when you think about deciding and living this thing, this state of being that 
you came with, custom made with, right? And then you decide that, oh, I want to get married. Trust me, that is something abnormal. No, let me not put, not abnormal in the sense of it's not good, but abnormal in the sense of it is a different phase is a higher phase is a phase that is different from what we were born with you get what i mean so it is a phase of responsibility it means that you are leaving your comfort zone to say i want to step up i want to care for not just myself but other people and i want to lead them i want to teach them i want to be able to you know show them how to do life so that they can build on it to create their own better life. You know what I mean? So it's not something that will come without challenges, right? Because when other people are involved, like, and I guess you know by now, one of the toughest things to do on earth is to lead other people. It doesn't even matter whether those people are your spouses, they are your children and relatives. I'm sure you know. Now, so is it is is it's normal to have certain kind of feelings and emotions when you're becoming married, when you're getting to be married, when your you know your girlfriend is now going to become wife, when you're going to move from just a boyfriend to becoming a husband. The feelings are common. You have certain kind of feelings. Sometimes it's an uneasy feeling. You feel like, I hope I can do this, right? When everybody go, has gone home, you start feeling like, oh my God, you know, what? how do I do this? How do I really be the head of a home, for instance? How do I lead this woman? How do I get her on my side all the time, right? There are so many feelings and emotions you feel around this time. Some people feel a sense of... Um, for lack of a better word, I have friends who say, I feel like uh, my freedom is um, is um, caged right now, like something like that. <laughs> Very hilarious feeling, right? Feel like, oh my God, I can't just stand up and do anything I want to do like before and several, several other me. So it's a, it's, it's a transitory stage, right? And that's why it's very important for you to go through this phase. And in fact, the whole marriage um, institution with open communication as your weapon yes you know i'm all of you know what's going there oh yeah not just communication openly like part of being married is part of saying okay i know i'm not just me alone i need to carry my partner along and how do you carry your, your partner along how do you carry your partner along how do you uh, like in a job in a job scene, how do you carry your workers along? How do you carry people who you want to give you value? How do you carry them along? You communicate a lot back and forth. Oh, do it this way. Change the color. Change the font. Do that. Do that. It's that same way, you can keep certain information to yourself in a marriage institution and hope to um, to succeed. So open communication is a no brainer. Like it's something that must be done, and is at the point you're communicating all the way that you begin to align your expectations. You understand what she wants, what she expects from you. You begin to understand whether what you expect from her is realistic or not, all of that. So that at the point, at the point you guys begin to blend and align, you know, and that is a very key thing to mention in the aspect of transitioning to marriage, right? Now, how do you go about the whole um, cultural mix I mean, she's coming from a different background. You coming from a different background. She coming from a different home. Sometimes she's she maybe she might be coming from a home that is more uh, compact, fewer people. Maybe you come from a very large family where you guys are like twelve siblings, <laughs> twelve siblings, and a lot of um, extended family. You guys live with other people as well, so you are used to you know living in a big house. But she might just grow up with she and her brother and. Or she alone and very minimal relatives and people. So it can also be vice versa, right? So it could be that. It could also be the fact that you guys come from different tribes, different nations, different races, different homes, right? And that is something that needs learning how to navigate, right? Now, how can these cultural backgrounds impact newlyweds? Very, 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 very key. It shows right so you must be able at this point you're living singlehood your default mode to say i want to accept and embrace everything that is you 
right? So whether it's your culture, whether it affects the way she likes to dress, the kind of food she likes to eat, the kind of places she likes, the kind of music she vibes to, you will have to accept them, you know, and that's what marriage is about. Now, remember that what this podcast is about is about the dynamics of um, building a blissful family foundation, the foundation, right? Now, these are things you have to open-heartedly receive. You have to accept her wholeheartedly, her culture, her tradition, the way she does things. And when we say culture, tradition, people mix it up. Just how people do things, their belief system, their values. These ones are even deeper because they are not like clothing, food, and all that. They are ingrained in the way people respond to things, the things they believe, the things they say. So value system as well is so, so important, right? Now, also, you have to celebrate this thing. So you're coming from your background with your own culture, your own tradition, and she's coming from hers. You must have to be able to be open to blend this culture within your family. Now, that is where two of you need to talk about the things from each of your cultures that you want to keep secret within your own family. Remember, you remember your own family now is a new never existed before family, right? So you're not going to run it like, oh, my, how my parents did it or how my relatives do it. No, yours have never existed. So it's a plain canvas. So how do you blend your culture and traditions within your own family? So it means that two of you have to sit down to say, okay, when it comes to this, we do things this way or that way, but we're not going to do that in our family. Let's do away with this. Let's keep this. Let's do this. Let's teach our children this before they come. Let's plan this. You get what I mean? Things up to how do we name our children? Are we going to name them our by by what their indigenous names or we're going to name them English names or Spanish names, whatever? All of those things can be because these are things that put, that have potentials of causing really big problems in families as it grows because they were not dealt with at the foundation stage, right? So celebrating and integrating your culture within your family as two people coming to one is a very fantastic thing to do. All right. Now, I mean, how do you address all of these things that can, you know, bring cultural differences? Like I said, you have to be open to discussing them. You have to ask again why she does certain things the way she does, right? So that you guys can also decide. So this thing, you'll be doing it this way. Okay. But if it's something that is affecting you or you don't really vibe with, you can find out why she does it. It's possible for her not to even know why they do things a certain way because sometimes things about culture and tradition, we embrace them without asking questions. So this is just how my father does it. This is how my mom does it. And we just, we do it, right? So you guys might have to my, 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 um, get to a point where you crack the code that, oh, it doesn't really mean anything. We can actually do it this way. For instance, it, it's my, it, it, it might just be that certain kind of food are cooked a certain way. And without asking questions, culture and tradition have made us do it a certain way. You guys can always flip it over. You can always innovate on it because now this is your family. This is your home. And that's part of the excitement, right? But remember, you have to embrace it. You have to talk about it. Then you have to agree that, okay, let's do this. Let's experiment with this. But we may not need to practice this in our home. Some people, when they give birth to children, they have to take them home to make certain incisions on their body or certain things like that. So if you come and you're like, no, we're not going to do that to our children. And I remember my mom telling me something like that and how they didn't take us back to do all of those kind of cultural incisions and all that. And I'm so, I mean, I'm so, so grateful that they didn't. In their case, they didn't really plan that they wouldn't do it. They just kept procrastinating. You see what I mean? So, <laughs> and then uh, at the point they got born again and felt that those things were kind of fetish. And so they decided that it won't even be part of their home. Um, boy, I'm so grateful they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> because you know the rest. Okay, so um, I know I'm infantizing the importance of communication. Yeah, you can't do without it. You can't at any point in a marriage decide to keep things to yourself. That's like deciding to be single while married. No, it's not allowed. <laughs> it is not allowed, guys. It is not, yeah? So, um, and communication um, involves a few things. Okay, let me give you some practical tips. Like, in communication, you must listen. You must listen to what she's saying and the things she's not saying, but her body language is saying. Yes. So that means you have to focus on what she's saying. Your mind can be somewhere else or you're tapping on your phone when she's trying to discuss something she feels is very important. That's a no-no. That's disrespect. 
if it, I mean, I mean, don't do it. Don't do it, right? Communication also means you accepting um, when she says, oh, I didn't like this, you did. You should be able to say, oh, really, I didn't understand that and I didn't know I was hurting you. You'll be able to apologize. That's part of communication. Communication is also about keeping quiet when you need to so that she can express herself. Communication also can do with having to keep quiet at certain times when you guys need to process your thoughts. And of course, communication um, also has to, effective communication now also has to do with making sure that you don't respond just because the other person is talking, but you respond to be able to clear up and understand what she had just said. So you can reiterate what she has said to make sure that you understand her point of view, right? So these things seem like big English. I know that in practical terms, sometimes it's a bit tricky, but you have to be open-minded getting into marriage in the first place, right? And these are also tips that can help you to um, resolve conflicts. Yeah, if you want to promote this understanding, if you want to promote understanding and unity in your home, then you have to. You have to talk about everything. Some people say things like, and see, let me even say it here. I mean, you have to drop the idea that men don't say certain things. Men don't, all of that are part of culture and tradition that you picked up. You have to drop it like it's hot. Some of these cultures, you pick them, you know, with the boys or with the girls or with the beer parlor or with relatives, with uh, the streets or just colloquial things or things we read from books and ideologies. It's not everything you hear and see that works in your, that will work in your home. You understand who you're getting married to. You know what she wants. So you have to blend you have to blend and be who, and you don't have to pretend. You have to play your card as you are and be able to understand her. Then you guys strike a balance, right? And that's how to promote um, unity and understanding. Don't at every point, at any point, make it make your partner feel like she's alone or you don't have time to listen. Trust me, that because that brings cracks in relationships, right? This is twenty twenty four. If there's anything that's at the top of my of my list is to help anyhow I can to ensure that we have less divorces, less um, separations, less heartbreaks in the world, right? And you and I are in partnership to make this happen. So starting from my home and your home, yeah? So we got this, right? We got this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, I wish I could I could give you a high five, but take the virtual high five anyway. <laughs> okay, so um, let's uh, begin to wrap up by looking at how, as a newlywed, you um, balancing work, family, self care can take a toll on you, right? It can really be confusing. Like, how do I become this husband that everybody is expect looking up to me now as? And also, you know, becoming a father soon, maybe, and also maintaining going to work, also helping at home, you know, handling my family, taking care of myself, my mental self, my 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 health in general, right? It can be tricky. It can be tricky. And I, I, I've always asked, you know, I think I was, it was today I was reading someone talking about making goals for the year in nine aspects of their life. Yeah, so there are different aspects of your life. Some, If you're one of the people who don't have a hobby at all, like you don't even exercise, you don't have an exercise routine, or you don't have a routine for something that you really love that relieves you from stress, this is a good time to pick up one. Trust me, right? Getting married should be able to give you an all-round... Um, understanding help you balance balance in this state doesn't mean that it's always going to balance in that sense but you have to make priority things that are priority and important you have to prioritize things that are important very 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 key right we are we just have 24 hours in a day but you know the things that are important to you to make sure that your financial future is um stable you have to make sure that there are certain things that you don't play with when it comes to your health there are certain things that they want you have to do for work to go on for self care for romance for for spirituality and all of them right also is about managing time right and um so you have to make sure that your time every time is um used judiciously oh, and let me even say something we live in an age where there's so much distraction if there's something you want to do this new year, it is making sure that you don't waste time on social media, except you're creating. Yeah. So if you're creating content, you have to make sure you're putting energy into doing that and getting to work than 
consuming content all the time when it's not in line with your goal. Yeah, so I've talked about prioritization. Sometimes it might not balance, but you have to prioritize in every aspect of your life. The other part is in time management. And I think this aspect of wasting them on social media for most people is a problem. I mean, people sleep with their phone. The, the last thing you look at is your phone. The first thing you look at when you wake up is your phone. Look at how you can cut down on that. Look at how you can cut down on a lot of wastes of time, right? And also, self-care is so important. Some people think it's only women that need to go for all girl strips, that need to go for pedicure and manicure. Guy, this is the year to think of that less. Remove that mindset that you, you don't matter. And I, I always say this in order of my videos. Most times um, in the hospitals, when you see a, a man being brought in, he's actually brought in. He's actually brought in because his case had become um, almost out of hand. So relatives have to rush him and it's always an emergency. And many times they don't make it back home. Don't let that be you. Don't keep procrastinating your health and taking care of everybody else but you. Self-care for you might also be finding time to read, to just go and think, to have an alone time. And that has to be, that you see why it's important to communicate? Your partner has to understand that and give you that time to do what suits you right as long as it's something that will make you come back refreshed better focused and all of that because you are important in the scheme of things all right now building a supportive um, group of friends or, or people who are newly married as well where you share is also very important right and of course seeking advice I remember one of the things that really made me feel very good about marrying my husband when he was cutting me was he took me to an older couple. They are in their seventies, very well to do family with their children doing well. And it was such, such a good thing to see that, you know, he could subject himself to, to, um, mentorship yeah and it was very i mean it, it gave him points you know for me to have accepted so you must find older couples whose values are in line with what you want to build and serve them and get advice from them visit them maintain relationships with them right and you can also create your own support system so you can look you can be the one that is looking out for newlyweds guys who have just got married that you know meet once in a while to discuss virtually in person in person is the best so you can find them within your neighborhood if you can and of course of course a mix of both is also very important so these are foundational things guys that we're talking about right so let's look at also financial planning yeah some people say i didn't talk about this on time because people think that it's only for the men to to finance the family yeah why that is very 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 good right um to plan your finance is very important. This is a topic that is a bit complex because what I call planning might not be what you call planning, right? But if you want to secure the future of your family, it means you have to think about the kind of job that you need to take, the kind of business you want to do while getting married. And the two of you combined, you have to also plan what time is appropriate, for instance, to bring in a third person, like a first child, a second child, a third child. Planning that with your finances will help you stay away from a lot of stress. Trust me. And the sign, and it's not okay to just think about, oh, we want to have four children or six children without looking at your finances. It's not a smart thing to do, if you ask me. Right? And um, I think that this is a great time to also begin to budget. This is January 1st, so you can begin to budget right now. Yeah? Budget what goes to food, what goes to um, the car maintenance and store, what goes to laundry, what goes to school fees, if there's any school fees person right now, what goes to self-care, you know, all of that. Very, very important, guys. This is a good time to begin to budget for your family and also save. No matter what you earn, you can save. And saving platforms that can give you um, interest for your savings, high value interest, not just all those one cobble kind of thing. <laughs> Okay, uh, and then set goals, right? So if you're saving, save towards a course. That way you stay motivated to keep saving, right? And also look at ways to, to increase your income, income sources. This is not the time to keep one job only or keep one job or one business. You might need to create two or three more business streams and that is okay. Thank God you have a partner now. So between you two, you and your wife, you can get things going. And I'm telling you this because it's something I'm still improving on. After having this, I have a lot of, um, not a lot. So I have 
you know a number of sources of income but it's not even enough guys you don't want me to even talk about myself about my family right so it's not even enough so there is not there's not ever going to be like until you hit the the part where you can spend on anything without thinking you can pay your workers um about um two million a month salary and you, you is not is not creating a pinch in your pocket don't stop working okay <laughs> right see you know why this is also very important one of the big things biggest things that cause divorces and separation in marriages is financial related we're not we're not even going to lie about it finances are a big deal and coming from you know um, africa and everywhere where you know the finances is seems to be um, expected to be predominantly from the man you can't sleep on it you can't sleep on it so if you have a woman who is at any you and all that you know you are just not um okay at any you and it's not um giving you stress about it you know it's what it is you are not in the i mean you're in the rare statistics you know is that that's not what a lot of men are seeing so you still need to sit up and make sure that you can cater and bring your own part of the bargain every time and lead while at it right i remember in being a leader you have to show an example right so you have to show an example that's what leadership is about okay and um of course part of the foundation you need to create is you have to be you have to have creative ideas that can help you keep your romance alive romance and it may seem mean different things to men and women right so she might need to call those more the touch on the butt more the pecking more than you know the actual act right <laughs> but you might want the actual right more so you must have created a balance between those to make sure that your romance life is on point right part of it of course create date nights this is something i'm going to drag my husband about this year we had a lot of date not date night date days right we had a lot of time to date after our marriage because we didn't kind of date um physically before we got married so I'm thinking that we, we have to improve on that this year as well. You know, surprises, surprises, surprise her. See, everybody likes surprises. And see, when you begin to surprise her, you're opening the doors for her to also surprise you. So you see how it goes. It goes two ways. All those small gestures, send her messages, send her, you know, written notes as you're leaving the house and she's still sleeping in goes a long way see life is already so stressful being in marriage should be a haven that will give us peace and love away from the from the madness in the world so make it worth the while yeah yeah so don't ever stop dating her because oh now you guys are married you have to have an on ongoing courtship and keep appreciating her keep telling her how beautiful she is and when she start adding weight in the, all the right corners because of childbirth and she's feeling all like oh my god i'm changing i don't like this i hate my body make sure you're there to affirm her to tell her how that you brought a whole human being to the world and you're looking this hard you know what i mean keep her you know, um, looking forward to hearing you from you, looking up to you. That's what leaders do in their homes, right? And in the aspect of, and think this is the last part I'm going to touch on, on aspect of parenting, please make sure that you plan properly. Plan the right time to bring in children and the right time to bring in another child. Family expansion is something that as a newlywed, you have to discuss carefully please you're going to have a lot of maybe disjointed ideas because of culture some people just say i've always said i want to have four for when i was a child you must you, she might be the one saying it or you might be the one saying it but you guys might have to come to a point if two is what is realistic at this point right so you guys need to sit down and discuss it parenting and family expansion is something that newlyweds need to discuss more about. Forget the things you talked about when you were cutting. Now you're in the marriage and you know that the dynamics are a bit changed and all that. Always put your focus on well-being for the both of you, on financial freedom, you know, while you're thinking of children. You don't want to bring in children who will come and just barely survive, right? And um, of course, so your philosophy and has a lot of philosophy has to align to make that happen right how do you prepare for family growth sometimes you need a bigger home sometimes you need a another job a well-paying job sometimes you need to this have you thought about the sleepless nights you have to keep taking turns to take care of the baby at the earlier stage she's sleeping and then you stay awake with the baby and then you sleep she stays awake with the baby how many of those times do you want to 
you know, have the, how many of those circles do you want in your home? I listened to somebody recently, I think it's Olumide Emmanuel, yes, who said that you are only going to be free from the shackles of, you know, what seems like shackles of parenting when your last child is 25 years old. So subtract that from your actual age to see how long you're going to keep parenting, you know. So that is very key, right? Now, we have discussed quite a lot in this podcast. I want to encourage you to decide and make up your mind that I will build a happy home, a blissful family, right? And of course, there are more resources right here in the channel. You can go ahead and, you know, just knock yourself out and enjoy listening. It's been wonderful talking to you, dropping a comment what resonated with you, what you're applying this new year, and I'll talk to you again in the next video or in the next podcast. All right. Thank you so much. Cheers.